back to speechless and we're going to have to add some more judges to this uh, video after you watch this show and it's too bad we have to do that but that's the way it is uh, i want to introduce my guest today i have uh, here next to me uh, sandra grazini rucky right yes correct and michelle mcdonald with the family innocent project and uh, i just want to say michelle i just uh, i've seen you in the, well, actually, I played you last week on the show a little clip with you before the appellate court. And uh, to me, you're standing up like few lawyers do. Mm -hmm. And you've actually are putting yourself in the spot of what what attorney can the court abuse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, might, you might be right. Tim, I, I just think that these shows like the one you have... Uh, here are, are remarkable. I just commend you for putting all this information out there. Well, thank you. And I wouldn't have information to put out there mm -hmm. if people weren't exposing and willing to tell their story about what's going on in the court and uh, the abuse that's taken place. And uh, Sandra, uh, you're you're being abused in the courtroom. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I so, would say so. Uh, I want to just kind of give us a, a brief, you know, how did you get into the court situation? What's going on? You know, most people just don't think the courts are the way they are, and but you were there and the court started abusing. So just give me a little bit of your story, kind of the foundation. Um, I can kind of give you the foundation. I was married to my mm -hmm. former husband for approximately nine, 19 years. 19, okay. I, we had five children, Nico, Samantha, Gianna, Nia, and uh, Gino. And uh, we have a picture of the kids. Uh, Nathan, uh, he's busy. Nathan, you want to put up a picture of the kids there? Uh, so what were their names? Well, we'll Nico? wait till the picture gets up here and then oh. we'll go through the names. But uh, uh, there we go. Nico's the oldest boy. Okay. Next to him is Samantha. All right. And then Gianna is all the way on the right. Okay. Nia is in the middle holding their hands. Okay. And Nico's holding Gino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this picture is approximately 10 years old. 10 years old. And I realize what basically just did there was put you through a little torture. Uh, and because it's, I know how hard that is. Uh, and you haven't seen them now for how long? 413 days. I have okay. a no contact order. I've, um, I can't contact them by third party. I can't contact their doctors, their teachers. If I even try to attempt to go through a third party, um, per uh, Dave Knutson's orders, I'm to be immediately incarcerated. Okay. So it's been, I've missed, like I said, 413 days. Easter's, Christmas, Halloween, New Year's, all their birthdays. Right. I can't even send a card. Okay. A full blown no contact order. All right. So, well, I, I know what most people are thinking when they hear that. You, you really must be a bad person. <laughs> now, now, I put that in perspective. Yeah. I didn't see my kid for five, my kids for five years. Okay. So, uh, with, with you know, just I don't even have an order like yours, you know, but couldn't see them yeah, uh, my because of the way the system works is based off of nothing. There is absolutely no reason, no foundation for it. So you have no allegations of abuse? No allegations of abuse, nothing. There's did they say, did the Judge Knutson say why? No, he has not given a reason. There is no reason. Okay. Simply because he can. Right. I mean, we hear that a lot in his courtroom. Um, his famous line is, this is my playground. I can do what I want. He says that in his courtroom? That is his line in his courtroom. He has said that a couple times now. And... Now that kind of puts the attorney at a hard spot because an attorney defending their client would say, if they were defending their client appropriately, well, Your Honor, we have laws, we have rules, we have things that describe the relationship between things. And one of those laws is you can't do what you want. <laughs> well, I, I want to make it perfectly clear as her attorney, you know, 413 days ago, I didn't even know mm -hmm. Sandra Gazzini, right. Rocky, Tim, uh, I uh, met her January 1st of this year. Uh, she came to a family innocent social, uh, very lost, distressed, saddened, scared. Um, right. And, and she, she asked me to help her 
and I think on January 3rd I met with her mm -hmm. in my office and uh, I'm, a, I'm very busy, have very little capacity right. to take on a case. I did not think it would go as far as it went and I took it on solely for the purpose of doing a constitutional challenge relating to our statute and this, this order. That statute 518 or? Statute 518. Okay. Yes. And uh, that's the divorce laws. Right. Uh, because what happened to Sandra, basically, Tim, is that she was seized from her home, mm -hmm. from her children, from all of her property, mm -hmm. uh, and was uh, uh, just stuck. Uh, she could not uh, contact her children even by third party. Uh, n nothing. So basically, it was a, sur a seizure, and she was forced to abandon her children. And it was within hours. This wasn't over a period of time. I had 100% legal and sole custody, which a prior judge had already approved. It was and, done. And which judge was that? That was Judge Bormanger. Okay. I was already Dakota County. Dakota County. Okay. I was already divorced. Okay. Um, Dave Knutson reopened my divorce. Which divorces can get reopened? But I mean, you have to go to appeal. He didn't. There was no appeal. Oh, okay. But on certain say, certain cases for certain things. No, divorces don't get reopened like hers gets reopened. Okay, that's that's what <laughs> I'm clarifying. They don't clarifying. get reopened like hers get. Reopened. I mean, you can um, relook at the child support order. You can look and that's at parenting not called time. Re re reopened. There you go. It's just called <laughs> modification. Modification. And really, the okay. only th the way things you can do is modify support. Let's say you lose your job and you can back go back and try to modify child support to be mm -hmm. lower. Or if there's endangerment of the children, you can go back right. and you can motion to, uh, you know, ha change the custody right. order of your children. Sandra was already divorced. Right. And that's a real important fact. And uh, and she I, had full, and you had full custody. And I had 100% full legal. custody. And sole legal. I had sole legal and physical okay. custody. All yes. right. Now, an important point to make is that Sandra was the all-American mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was it was probably the best custody case you would ever have mm -hmm. as an attorney. It's probably the best one I've ever seen. Mm. First of all, she was living in the same home for 17 years. Right. This home that she was asked to be, be taken out of mm -hmm. or ordered to be taken out of. Uh, she had a, uh, a, her five children. They all mm -hmm. lived in that home. I think you bought the home. home we bought the home um, two weeks to my second daughter, my oldest daughter, sorry, Samantha mm -hmm. was born. So okay. we just came in with Nico. So Samantha, Gianna, Gino, and Nia were all born in that house. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I had the same doctors, the same teachers, you know. For all these for years. For 17 years. Yeah. And then within hours, all of a sudden, I get a phone call from my attorney saying, you have to leave all your personal belongings, your children, and have zero contact with them, or you'll go to jail. And, and that the case was reopened, mm -hmm. okay? So what grounds was it reopened or relitigated or what? My former... It, really, that isn't important. Okay, <laughs> I mean, all right. There were, let's say no grounds. All right. Let's really just say no, no grounds. grounds. The, you know, the, 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 the biggest issue is this order. You, you know, Tim, the biggest yeah. right we have as citizens is to be left alone. Right. And uh, to even fathom the fact that a judge could be sitting in his chambers talking on the phone tell her attorney look here's what you're gonna have your client do mm -hmm. and the attorney would call her up and she would be told to leave her home leave her five children there uh, take a suitcase right she could take a suitcase that she didn't own because mm -hmm. she worked for the airlines and they had a suitcase and the order does specifically say and I have it here September seventh, okay. two thousand twelve. You it just says, hold that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean they're not going to. They, Which is important to know that yeah. the order was signed the same day that what, I was told to leave the house. What yeah. What was the uh, date on it again? September. The, the order September seventh, two thousand twelve. Oh. And uh, it's dated September seventh, two thousand twelve. It's signed on September seventh, two thousand twelve, and it says that respondents motion to remove the children from the custody and care of petitioner. Now, respondent was her former husband. Mm -hmm. He didn't even get custody. His he didn't get custody? No, he no. did not. He has a severe criminal history, very okay. severe, which Dave Knutson has also usurped and dismissed. 
Oh, well, wait, wait, wait a <laughs> second. <laughs> I can't ignore that. <laughs> He had a, so he, he no longer has a criminal history? Oh, he does. There's just things missing. Oh, things missing. Okay, well, that, things missing. That's a key word. Uh, that comes into later. <laughs> okay. It says, it says here, petitioner, that was Sandra, shall vacate the home. This uh -huh. was the home that she owned. That 100%, day. 100%. That day. That she was living in. Uh, and she was to vacate her home at Ireland Place, Lakeville, Minnesota, no later than Friday, September 7th, 2012, at or before noon. She had never even seen this piece of paper. She got a phone call from her attorney that said, this is on its way, uh, wow. and you need to vacate your and leave your children. They're forced wow. to abandon her children. I thought I was bad getting three days notice. <laughs> you yeah. didn't add three hours. Unbelievable. And never wow. even got, and that's, there, there is no due process anymore. There is no such thing as reasonable notice mm -hmm. in, in nearly every facet of, of family court and CPS, child protection. There, there is no due process. And they they so actually slap you with something like this, and then they say, okay, now you get your process. Were there any findings of fact in this order? Is that, is that it? That's it right there? Just those three pages? Yeah, there's, there's four, four pages. Four pages. It's so important to know that. Find, findings of fact, conclusions of law, just an order? Yeah, just an order. Uh, and basically, again, it's totally violated her constitutional rights and her civil rights. I mean, you even if you're renting a place, you get 30 days. Right notice but here's your family leave. here's your family being taken from you who, who, who got the kids a child protection service no child protection kids? was never involved um dave knutson did not want child protection involved okay um she I, she doesn't she doesn't know. know you don't know who has the no right there was now. never a, um we we learned in in a trial that we had uh september 11th of this year or 12th of this year what happened uh according to the sources that were there, uh, you know, it, it, she she really has no knowledge. You have to think of it from her perspective. She was just told to leave, yeah. and she could have no right. contact by third party or be incarcerated. That means she couldn't call their school. She couldn't call whoever she thought might be taking care of them. She couldn't go. Church was another thing. They I went to the same church. church. The children had the sacraments. Could not go to the church. You couldn't go to, the, the judge ordered you not to go to the church? Well, no contact means no contact. And that's if the kids showed up there. No, but you didn't know not, where the kids yeah. were going to show up. No. Third party. If she went and talked to the priest that might talk to the kids, this is, was her, her, her. You, you got to over defend yourself. You got to over protect yourself in these situations because they can make somebody up, something up. They can set you up. Mm -hmm. You know, they can uh, run the kids in front of you. you and, know? and that's. That would be a breaking a court order. Right. And you've heard of no contacts, Tim, in the domestic abuse setting, in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an order for protection. Somebody goes in, says there's an emergency. They, they're they evicted for their home for a short period of time. There's an evidentiary hearing very speedily mm -hmm. um, and then a result. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not that type of an order. It was just a family court order. Right. There was no due process. There right. was no notice uh, at all to Sandra or the attorneys. Uh, it was also, uh, you've heard of harassment restraining orders. Right. I have a case in the HROs. Supreme Court. Yes, yep. HROs. Mm -hmm. I have a case in the Supreme Court relating to the constitutionality of these no mm -hmm. contact orders because I think that if you're contacting somebody to say hello or to say I'm sorry, that should be okay. I think they should be defining the contact more. And, right. and so that, wa that wasn't this type of an order. It was a, just a, a, a family court order and actually just a judge, judge's order because in, they don't have a family court in Dakota County. There's only oh, two, really? Yeah. Okay. There's only two family courts in the entire state of Minnesota. That's in uh, Hennepin, Hennepin and, and Ramsey. Ramsey. The okay. rest of the uh, district courts just take on multiple types cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so there isn't a fam, they call it a family court division, but it's just the judge of the day. So uh, this order, sh you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, if there was an emergency, then you get a hearing right away. Right. We never and, and it's the thing, the facts are sorted out. Why are you doing this? This order has been in place 
okay. for 413 days. And you haven't had a hearing, f well, you had one in September, but prior to that there was been no hearing since the day that you got this order. Just there were, the, when I came, became involved, I did a hearing uh, and a very extensive motion relating to the constitutionality, like I mm -hmm. said, of our statute 518, because it's unconstitutional as written and applied. It, and I, I made a, an argument to uh, Judge Knudsen, and he just flatly denied without any type of uh, analysis uh, that, that his behavior Okay, and, and, when, and when did that motion take that place? That took place February 26th. So September and then February uh, took place. Now, are you willing to take some calls? Sure. From the audience here? Okay, we got a phone call here. Uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Tim Kinley, thanks, thanks for the show. Yeah, thank the you. The question I have, and I, I agree with Ms. McDonald. Ms. McDonald makes some good points about those restra uh, restraining orders. Also, and, you know, the Minnesota court system, the Supreme Court, better deal with this instead of running and hiding. My question is a lot of this seems to originate from, uh, in this case, from Judge Dave Knudsen. Can you give us some background on why Dave Knudsen would be behaving this way? Because I was under the impression his father was a state senator from Dakota County, and he was a state senator from Dakota County. Why would he, uh, being elected by the people, be of this mindset? This seems to be completely unconstitutional. Being an elected representative, he should be, for all these years of growing up in that kind of family, he should be very well aware of the infringement of the constitutional rights which he is delivering or he's insisting upon in his courtroom. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that very accurate information. My understanding is that he was a state senator. His father was a state senator. He practiced for law for about seven minutes. And then he became, yeah, <laughs> seven minutes. Then he became a judge. Uh, appointed, appointed by uh, appointed, Tim Pelani, appointed, but he's appointed judge. Appointed yes. by... Not vetted by the people. No. Right. And it's also important to note that he is on the Board of Judicial Standards. He's, so, he's, he's the, the chair, right? The, the, I'm not yeah. sure of his exact role, but if you go into the website, you'll see his name mm -hmm. in lights as on the Board of Judicial Standards. I think that's an appointed position as well, mm -hmm. and there's only two judges yeah. in that position. Uh, yeah, and so if you're going to file a complaint to the Board on Judicial Standards uh, against him, does he get it? <laughs> or does David Paul just push it aside <laughs> and, and just ignore it? And, yeah. But but this is interesting. Uh, I heard that there's been some over 3,000 orders filed well, by David Knudsen or... Yeah, there's order. been 3,482 orders? orders, yes. In the, if you take... I, I don't get that. Yeah, if you take an order, uh, you know, usually it, there's a date like the September 7th order, mm -hmm. and you break it down into okay. orders. Right. And you take all of her multiple, maybe there's 50 or so orders. 89. 89. Separate. Separate pieces, pieces of paper. paper. Okay. Separate orders. Se 89 separate orders. Uh, that, that itself is and just 3, amazing. And 3,482 orders. Within. This one, okay. this one um, and this is really important for the, the public to be aware of, is that people are just going in to get a divorce. A divorce mm -hmm. is simply an order terminating the marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not... 3,482 orders, but it turns out that way. Right, and right, Tim, I understand. This is, this is important. This is what, what we do with Family Innocence is when we take on a case, uh, it, and this is just really hard for people to understand, you, we joint petition just for the orders you need. In other words, Mm -hmm. If you want to terminate your marriage, that's all you're going to give the court jurisdiction over. Right. So you will just, you know, say in the joint petition, I want to terminate my marriage, period. No typical language for such other and further ju relief as the court deems just. Just, I want to terminate my marriage. And if the court says, well, what are you going to do about custody? 
it's none of your business. We really have not asked the court to do anything about custody. Mm -hmm. Well, what about what you're going to do with your property? We really haven't asked the court to do anything about that. Mm -hmm. That's right. the difference with the way we do things with family innocence. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the orders you need. You might need a name change order. You might need a support order mm -hmm. or want a support order. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and it's all by agreements. And so this judge just does whatever he wants. <laughs> that's a, that's unbelievable. All Pretty right, much. we got another caller here. So, uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Well, I just have a quick question. Sure. I'm wondering, the lady uh, there, the guest, I'm very sorry she is experiencing all this, and I, I'm so sad that her family has been uh, ripped apart by the judicial system. This is just ridiculous, and it's appalling. Uh, my question is, the lady, she owned her home, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So she was awarded that during her divorce. So yes. she could keep her family united and unified at their home. Right. Correct. When they came or when they told her she had to vacate and stuff, <coughs> why wasn't her attorney notified of that process going on? Shouldn't they have been given some discovery information, something to, you know, so they could put up a defense for this before it actually happened? Well, and wouldn't there have to be a warrant? Yeah, because you're taking so. somebody off their property? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And don't they have some kind of probable cause they have to do that? <laughs> it, again, it was a civil proceeding. And well, uh, you, yes, I guess not, you know, because judges, this particular judge uh, just could do whatever he, he felt he wanted well, to do. This, there, there's not a lot of... This judge it, seems we, to have a problem. Yeah, we, and if he's doing this, not... I mean, it's bad enough he's done that to you and your family, but to do it to other families, I mean, you would think that somebody would be investigating him. Maybe he's mentally ill. Mm -hmm. um, good question. <laughs> it, that's an, an excellent comment, question. Uh, well, yes. he's obviously drunk with power. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> drunk with power, and it's just alarming. It, it is so alarming, and t to me, it's, it's, it's the worst case that I had seen. That's why when Sandra came to me, and I was extremely busy, uh, she, of course, was homeless, and she still is homeless at this point. Uh, I had no funds. I, I couldn't help but help her. Right. Thinking that it was maybe going to be a slam dunk, I actually told Sam, oh, this no. is, no, I was thinking, yeah, I mean, this is his way out. I was oh, thinking, okay. great, we'll do well, the, the constitutional challenge, then he'll be able to say, oh, you know, the statute is unconstitutional, I applied it unconstitutionally, which mm -hmm. certainly he did. Uh, it can't be, there is no, nothing in the statute that says, and by the way, you can order a parent out of her home and to abandon her kids and leave them there. There's nothing okay, you have one, no contact. One quick question before I hang up. Sure. Is there anything in the Constitution or in the statutes that says it's legal for a judge to kidnap a family? Yeah. Absolutely not, <laughs> well, obviously. Well, that's what, you know, you'd almost have to have that in the statute. Oh, right here. It says that a judge can just remove a mother or a parent. Wow. Well, you're in my thoughts and my prayers, and I will thank hang you. up now. Uh, th thank you. But this is uh, falls under 609.26, deprivation of parental rights. Uh, that would be the crime the judge committed, but mm. the exception to that or the affirmative defense is the kids are being abused. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the only way you can do that is to deprive a parental right by our statutes is the kids are being abused. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actual three three areas there. Well, thanks, Tim. I'm going to write that one down because <laughs> yeah, there is a, a criminal statute. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, but there's no criminal charge yeah. in this. Yeah. And what so we, you you, did, you don't do even get the chance to defend yourself. Yeah. A and the caller that explained that this judge has you know is a, was a state senator and then of course he was an attorney for a couple minutes but then he moved on to be a judge. He, and now he's on the Board of Judicial Standards, he is, uh, he, he's, he, he's claiming that he has absolute immunity. That because he's a mm -mm. judge, mm -mm. he can pretty yeah. much write any type of, on any piece of paper what he wants you to do and you need to do it. Yes. Wow. That is his claim. 
And judges do not have absolute immunity when they're violating your civil and constitutional rights or committing crimes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that you point that out, that he did deprive Sandra of her parental rights. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in another twist here, something that's going on that I, that I see. is The first time I saw you, Sandra, uh, was down at the legislature. I was filming a hearing. Mm -hmm. And it was about, I believe it was about whether we should elect judges or appoint judges. And yes. there's this effort to keep them all appointed because we so have an independent judiciary, which I don't see that happening, yeah. uh, that we, we'd have one. But you testified that we think judges should be elected. Yes, I did. Okay, I remember that. I got on a tape. I was digging through all my tapes. I couldn't find it. Organizational problem here. But um, <laughs> Judge Knutson last year was the key judge going down the legislature saying that judges should be appointed. Mm, how about that? And there's another grounds there for yeah. potential recusal uh, of him. I mean, not, he won't do it, obviously, but he knew you were down there. He, I believe that. Did he, you see him down there at all? Yep. Or? Okay, but he was there. I, I believe he was there at that hearing. I'm not positive, but I know he was at one of the hearings. I believe that you were at, and well, I just got, I just got to find that yeah, evidence. Find that evidence. <laughs> we need that evidence. You know, then uh, he heard my testimony. Well, I guarantee you, he heard that testimony somehow, some way, and the word got to him because the word in these courts get around. Because I got word about you from the IT department <laughs> in in uh, in in the. Minnesota Supreme Court and I'm going why are you telling me about Michelle McDonald you know and uh, I, I don't need to know that I'm just going there to film mm -hmm. you know and so they're telling me stuff about you uh, that is poor behavior mm -hmm. in, in all realms but I think there's an angle as to why you also may be punished <laughs> in this process he's done but a good job of anyway. doing that Okay, so uh, September 11th, you had a hearing, 12th, this last year, right? There were, yeah, there was a, before I, leading up to that, and again, I, I just want to, you know, yeah, We got about four out. minutes left. You got left. four minutes. Okay. <laughs> Sandra's like, if this could happen to Sandra Grazini Rocky and mm -hmm. her five children, it can happen to anybody. She was like the all-American mother. Yeah. Uh, and so there is no rhyme or reason why this piece of paper exists. There was no hearing. There's no hearing. There was no that. notice. Oh, you didn't know that. There's you no hearing. Know. There was no That's hearing. not the result of a hearing? No, no just, there was no hearing. This isn't a result. It was on the telephone. It was a phone call that my former husband's attorney made to the judge. And the judge ex signed. Ex parte. Ex parte. She made an ex parte, yes. And the judge signed it off a phone call. So the people know There's what no ex, hearing. <laughs> ex parte means without notice. And, uh, and I always think of ex parte as is, even though we might invite our listeners into this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, they're just eavesdroppers. Right. What we're saying here, here is, is ex parte, meaning that we're talking to each other right. and we're not inviting somebody in. To, to our discussions right. and our, our our decisions, right? And they need to invite the other party's attorney mm. and the other party into that discussion. And sometimes, uh, I mean, I think generally, ex parte means well if you've copied it to the other side, whether they've received it or not, or even oh. been able to chime in, that is an ex parte. Well, I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where's it going from here? We got about a minute to summarize these things. We're still waiting. We are still waiting. Um, at this point, all five children, we do not know where they are. I know that two went on the run to protect themselves. Really? To save themselves and from And how abuse. old are they right now? 14 and 15. Really? And they had to run to save themselves. And my um, other three, Nico, Nia, and Gino, we do not know where they are. Hmm. And the judge still hasn't issued an order from the September 11th of 2013 hearing. Mm-hmm. And next week, we're going to have you back on the show, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, to uh, explain more of this. 
<laughs> I think, but also some of your uh, endeavors in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, other <laughs> yeah, endeavors. My endeavors in the because courtroom. Because you are, I've read your briefs <laughs> on parental rights and you're arguing the right decisions. Very few attorneys, I haven't seen hardly any do this, but you've, in my mm -hmm. mind, you've got the right cases. Uh, you're making the right arguments to protect that parents have a right to raise their kids in their and faith I, and their beliefs and yeah. that Thank they're you. the parents, Thank not the state. And I have five cases in the Minnesota Supreme Court right now. Five? In, including Sandra Grazzini's Rockies that were petitioning to go to the United States Supreme Court. Okay. On her writ of mandamus. Okay. Wow. Thanks, Tim. Time's done. Thanks, Thank, Tim. Thank you for coming Thank you. on very much. I know it's heart rendering. All right, people, remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And also, good men don't do nothing. Get out there, do something. God bless. Have a great week.